Chapter 12. Shiner. As September gave way to October, Eric began to feel more at home in his new surroundings. His classes weren't too bad, and his teachers were fine. Sure, science with Mrs. Wilcox was deadly. She talked and talked, but there was nothing unusual about that. Eric supposed there were, there were boring teachers no matter where you lived. It couldn't be all P.E. and recess. He sometimes hung with Mary during home base. They weren't big friends or anything, but Eric felt like it was the beginning of something, though he had no clue what it was. Maybe he just liked her looks, her unfussy, natural beauty. The weird kid, Helen Beck, still, still stared darkly at Eric from time to time. If looks could kill, Eric thought. But for the most part, home base was about getting homework out of the way so that it didn't interfere with crucial television viewing. If Eric had not yet been invited into Griffin Connolly's inner circle, he definitely had a seat at the lunch table. And for now, that's all really Eric desired. He was even beginning to like some of the other guys, Pat and Hakem in particular. Even Drew P. could be okay sometimes when he ditched the tough guy act and tried being himself. Griffin was the group leader, the alpha dog. Depending upon his mood, he could be friendly and funny or dark and distant. Eric couldn't figure Griffin out, but even so, Eric found himself drawn to Griffin, the way a caveman might be attracted to fire. The light, the heat, the danger. Along the wall where the lines formed the st from, for students to buy hot lunch, there was a big Got Milk poster featuring an enormous photo of a pop singer's smiling face. Big sweep of blonde hair, flawless skin, thanks no doubt to Photoshop, and a milky mustache above a pearly white smile. Her head on the poster was gigantic, about three feet tall, and the height, or the height of a preschooler. Drew P. pulled a wad of gum from his mouth and stuck it to the singer's starlit left nostril. With a deft motion, he molded the gum into the shape of a drip. Drew P. stepped back and grinned. An artist satisfied with his creation. It's not bad, Droop, Cody commented. Truly disgusting, Eric agreed. Just then, Griffin brushed past the boys, head down and moving quickly, not turning to say hello, not even bothering to make fun of Cody's grease-stained jeans. What's up, Griff? Eric asked. He's got a shiner, Droop, he said in a low voice. A what? A black guy. He got into a fight? Eric asked. Drew P. checked to make sure Griffin was seated at the table across the room. He whispered, more like he got smacked around. Who did it? Cody interrupted. What are you, writing a blog? I'm just curious, Eric replied. Just curious, Cody, Cody repeated in a mocking tone. Eric glanced at Cody. That kid could be so annoying. But at the same time, he could see that Cody was being protective of Griffin. He was as loyal as... Doberman. Tell me what happened, Eric said to Drew. You never met his dad, have you? Eric had not. He'd seen Griffin's father only once, about a week ago. He was sitting at the Connolly's kitchen table in a bathrobe, slump-shouldered, staring at a cereal box. Griffin didn't bother to introduce them, and Mr. Connolly never looked up. Retired city cop? Not all that friendly, Drew P. explained. He has to be, what, at least 6'4", 275 pounds? Scary dude, Cody murmured. They moved through the line. Eric threw a square slice of pizza on his tray. Cody stuffed a buttered roll inside his shirt. The main problem is he's a drinker, Drew continued. Chris' father gave him that black eye, Eric asked. Wow, Sherlock, you are a regular genius, Cody whistled. He picked up his tray and cut in front of Eric. Don't say anything to him. Keep it on the down low. Shut up and mind your business. Eric sat down diagonally across from Griffin and tried not to look, but it was impossible. Griffin's eye looked worse from up close, swollen with ugly shades of blue and purple. Griffin kept his head down, hair dangling over his eyes and ate in silence. After a few minutes, Griffin glanced up and caught Eric staring at him. He locked eyes with Eric daring him to look away. Then the strangest thing happened. Almost in slow motion, Griffin pushed his hair back and turned his head to give Eric a better look, the way a model might pose for a photographer. Griffin's long, slender fingers went to his eyes. 
tips lightly touching the tender, bruised skin. A blind boy reading Blaille. What did it say? What story did it tell? Griffin did not show any expression. There was no emotion there. His face was battered and blank, his eyes cold. Eric shivered and looked away.